Discordant Hope, a series of monologues by Edmund Scrivens. Me. It isn't easy to explain this. It isn't easy to speak on what's deep inside, but I need to let it out. For almost five years I've been feeling like this. Rapid changes in emotion, extreme periods of remaining in one state or the other. I often wonder how life would have been had I just said those three little words. I need help. And I'm not meaning help as in professional help or the help of medicine. I just mean help in needing someone to understand what I'm going through. The confusion and chaos that's built in my mind and soul. The very depths of self-loathing and disgust that have built up. Distrust accumulating into a ball of rage because I find it so difficult to believe anyone anymore. That's why I choose who touches my head. It's not that I hate my head being touched or anything like that. For me, it's representative of allowing someone to be so close that they have potential control of you. You trust them enough that you will allow them the opportunity to hurt you severely. I find it difficult to trust anyone anymore. Too many times I've been hurt. Too often I have been made to look the fool because I was too accepting, too forgiving, too open and too willing. The last of my trust already spent on someone it was wasted on. Maybe that's why I feel the way I do. Maybe that's what made me finally break. I knew I could never trust anyone again, save for myself. And there's the terrible irony. I can't trust myself. My emotions have hold of me, not the other way around. I have no control because I have taken so many blows that all my defences are down. I would give anything to just one day wake up right. My bed to be right, the people I'm with to be right, the one I love to be right. But no, I just continue in a life of pain and misery. But at least I'm man enough to admit it. At least I'm man enough to finally own up and say I need help. At least I know not to turn on the people who truly care about me. At least I actually give a fuck. What's been my reward? A selfish little bitch of an ex and a selfish little bitch of lying hypocrite of a former friend. That's what. But at least I'm still fighting. At least I haven't just given up and wasted my time. My future is still bright, my life is still going to matter. What have you done with yourself? Clung impossibly to a relationship that had already ended, pissed away your education, and taken the first opportunity for a fuck. I'm sure you must be very proud. This is what makes me better than you. I did what I had to do for me. I haven't lied to myself that I've been blameless as much as you'd like to believe. Where you failed, I have succeeded. Fine, not enough that everyone is jealous of me, but enough to say I've done it and I'm damn well proud of myself. And at least I'm honest to the people who matter most. Or at least I try to be. Love gets you like that, I guess. There's always someone you wish you could say it all to, but you don't because they already have someone. And it may be someone you hate, but it's someone they love. And ultimately, if they're happy, that's what's important to you. If they're happy. But as far as I can see, she is. So all I can say is this. I love you with all my heart, and I hope you're happy. Because that is all I want for you. To be happy, healthy, and loved. If you ever need someone to talk to, I'll always listen. I'm here for you through thick and thin, as you have been for me. What do I owe you? Cowardly, that's what you call me. Disrespectful, that's what you say I've been. Inconsiderate, that's how you label me. Interesting. At least I have the balls to say what needs to be said to your face. At least I'm man enough to admit I did wrong. At least I absent myself when I feel like I need space. You accuse me of so many things, but you do not for one minute consider how your actions may affect someone else. Not one single solitary thought crosses your mind that maybe you're the one in the wrong and the other person is reacting to being treated like crap. 
You complain about my disrespect of your wishes, and yet, when I want to keep my distance, you try to insist yourself upon me. You complain about my anger, and yet you choose someone even angrier. You accuse others of bringing personal issues into places they do not belong. I've left what I once loved because you are too petty to leave something well enough alone. Honestly, what do I owe you? What does anyone owe you? All you've shown yourself to be is a selfish little brat with a bugger all understanding of human fucking de decency. Is it such a baffling concept that your ex would feel uncomfortable being around you and your new boyfriend? What gives you any sort of right to accuse me of anything? What honestly makes you such a sinless person that you can claim yourself blameless? I've earned my right to be angry. I've earned my right to be closed off. I've earned my right to spit in your face, say bye, and never wish to see you again as long as I live. Even together you found ways to disrespect my wishes or coerce me or otherwise make me feel bad and manipulate me. I told you time and again that I hated the idea of Valentine's Day, and yet what do you do? You put on the crocodile tears that twist my arm and force me to join in something I loathe. When it comes, when it came to buying adult books, you would constantly pester me about buying particular ones. So many times I would say I'd rather not, and yet you would find some way to make me feel bad about myself because I didn't. Every time we would have an upset, and I would find a way to blame myself, you would, f without fail, comment on how I've been depressed. Are you honestly so stupid that you couldn't see those comments were eating away at me piece by piece? You clearly are, you've lived with a depressed person for most of your life, and you still haven't a bloody clue how to look after them. In your mind, it's all about how their actions affect you. It can't possibly be that maybe they just want someone to hold them and tell them it's okay. Or maybe they need some breathing space to calm the fuck down. No, all it is is they're fucked in the head and it's ruining your life. But no matter, I'm doing something to help me, be both big and small. Though some are only small in a literal sense. Happy pill. Happy pill. That's what so many call it. Such a simple term for something so complex. And a misnomer. Antidepressants. They aren't happy pills. How they work doesn't make you happy. That's not their point. They help you to cope. Antidepressants make it possible. Maybe not for all, but at least for those who have found the right one to cope with existing. To be able to say to yourself, I can deal with this. It's a difficult pill to swallow the first time. You sit and you stare at it, wondering what this thing could do to you. Whether your entire personality could be warped by taking it. You constantly wonder, do I take it now? How do I take it? Should I take it? You question it constantly until finally you take it. And for those first brief moments, you feel the pill go along every step of the way, through your entire throat and stomach. You feel as the thing slides down and you begin to panic. Did I do the right thing? Have I taken the right amount? Amount. Is that enough? What should I do? And then calm seizes you finally. Rationality comes to your mind. You feel like you're finally doing the right thing. For the first time in months, even years, you're finally on your way to getting better. And that's what's needed most of all. single and happy. I can finally say it. Something that's taken me almost four years to be able to say. Four long years of heartache, trepidation, consternation and humiliation. Four years of self-doubt and depression. 
four years of self-loathing that could not be alleviated by anything. I'm happy to be alone. I'm happy to not have someone. You lambasted me for not being able to conceive of life without you, and yet you couldn't manage long on your own. Who's the one truly benefiting from life? Who's the one experiencing the new and different? I make my own life, my own part, and my own work. Yes, it may feel crappy that I can't be with the one I truly love. I'm ready to admit that, but I'm okay with it, because I can do my own thing. I don't have to worry about pleasing anyone but myself. I'm my own man. I can go out, have a laugh with friends, get drunk, make out with them, wake up in the train station and think, well that was an awesome night. I can perform in string orchestra co showcases and feel like I'm bettering myself, having others be proud of the effort I made despite the sheer terror and uncertainty I had in myself. I can eat pizza 17 nights in a row if I want to and not give a damn about anyone but me. I can invent all manner of insanity in role-playing games and only have to see if I'm happy with what's created because my glee has become infectious to those that experience it. I can play games all hours of the night and not give two shits about someone wh wanting me to come to bed, my only concern being, will I be awake enough for class? Finally. After constant questioning and feeling lousy about who I am, I can live. I can feel like my goddamn self for the first time in four years. I, I may wish for love, but for the first time in a long time I haven't felt desperation for it, like it would make me whole again. I feel complete in what I do to make me happy. And that's all that matters. Does it make me happy? Yes, that mindset might appear a little selfish to the uninitiated, but when you consider that my friends being happy makes me happy, but not so much their happiness makes me happy. If I have to dance around with a poodle on my head to make them smile, I will, but that's because I choose it. I don't have to, um, some misery guts complaining about the fact that I like to laugh. I can finally say that I feel happy on my own and no one can judge me for that, least of all you. Leave me alone. Just leave! Leave me alone. I don't want to be near you. I don't want you in my life. I have come to despise you like no other. Every inch of me holds back the urge to scream in your face. Every moment I stand speaking to you is another moment I want to strangle you. Each second I spend within the same house as you makes me physically sick. I hate you so much it gives me energy. Just leave me alone. Let me live my life. To be brutally honest, I should never have been with you. I wasn't me. I was a creature that had been broken and become incapable of fixing myself. I thought I needed someone there to fix me, to make me whole again, but I didn't. I needed to realise who I was again. I needed to know why I was acting the way I was. And now I know some of who I am again, I can say this much. All you do by trying to talk to me is make me even angrier at myself for being so damn stupid to ever let you into my life. I just want you gone. I don't want to see or smell you ever again once I'm out. I leave and you leave my life permanently. I mean permanently. I do not wish to see you anywhere near my life, whether in person or online. If you happen to see me in a chat, ignore me. If you find my YouTube channel, move along. If you for even one second deem it a good idea to step an inch towards my graduation, think again, because all you shall be greeted with is coldness and harshness. You are not welcome, and you never shall be again. Just leave. Forget we ever had anything. Forget I even considered you a friend. I already have. You made certain of that. Acceptance. You never understood me. You never once grasped the weight of what I felt, what I went through, what I experienced. How could you? It's not like you haven't been witnessing what I go through day in, day out for most of your... I... No. I'm done with talking to you. I've already said all I needed to say. 
now it's time to talk to the rest of the world, to speak to those who truly care, to explain myself to those who do love me. I know I've been difficult to live with at times. I've overreacted and become violent, and you've all forgiven me for that, even when I didn't deserve it. You could have easily cut me out, declared me nothing to you, but instead you realised the chaos in my mind and you forgave me. No amount of thanks can suffice for what you have done. I wish I could say for certain that what I live as, who I am, can change forever for the better. I truly wish I could. But that's the problem. The black fog is surrounding me. The light shines through for a time, but then it starts to choke me again. Some of you know exactly what that feels like. Others have known the feelings periodically. Some of you are just understanding enough to know when I need help and I need space. When you're depressed, when you have depression, you exist in two states. The first is a hungering, desperate, lonely state, a belief that no one cares about what you think, feel or say. The other, you speak your doubts of everything and everyone. You push away because it's the only way you can feel like you are your own person. You get questioned on why you're acting like that, and your only answer is, because I'm sick of everyone and everything. There's no logic, no sense, no rhyme or reason. You just react in such a manner because it's the only way you can protect yourself. I close these thoughts with this final one. After so much confusion over months and years, after so long trying to find myself again, talking it out with all my words for everyone to hear, I finally understand who I am. I am Edmund Scrivens. I have depression. That's fine, because I have people I can tell this to and won't judge me in the slightest for it. And for that, I thank you all.